sponsored in part by Pediatric Associates of Dallas. Pediatric Associates of Dallas has been providing excellence in pediatric medicine since 1971. PAD has locations in Dallas and Plano and is now open seven days a week because taking care of kids is what we do. The following content is not intended as a substitute for professional legal advice, medical advice, diagnosis or treatment. Always seek the advice of your attorney, advocate, physician or other qualified health provider with any questions you may have regarding any medical or educational concerns. Good morning and welcome to another episode of Empower Dyslexia. Um, on the show, we, oh, wait a minute, I'm Rachel Chambers. And I'm Stephen, you're out. <laughs> I forgot to introduce ourselves. Um, on the show, we talk about dyslexia and related disorders, interventions, research. Uh, we talk to people like experts in the field, people with um, personal stories. And um, we also talk about policy at the state and federal level. So thank you for joining us today. Um, Make sure you like us and subscribe to us on Facebook. And um, YouTube. And, oh, yeah, and YouTube. And on YouTube, we have, um, it's closed captioned if you would want to read it and watch it at the same time. Right. In English and Spanish. <clears throat> so. And uh, as always, you know, obviously if you're watching this live right now or watching it, you're watching it on either YouTube or Facebook Live. Uh, if you enjoy listening to our podcast, you can uh, choose one of these wonderful uh, apps from the App Store and or iHeartRadio now. This yeah. is, that's uh, pretty exciting that we've got it, uh, got on there now. Um, <clears throat> something new that we've got, I know that we've mentioned it a couple of times, we now have our own discount code for Learning Ally for family memberships. So if you would like to have a family membership, you can go to Learning Ally and use a discount code ED20 and get 20% off a first year family membership. So that's pretty exciting yeah, also. Very exciting. I like what they do because um, it's they're audio books, but they're read by actors. So it's not like some machine or robot reading the book to you. So I think it makes it more personal and um, I just like what they're about, you know? Yep. They're a good company. Um, Okay, so today on the show, uh, we have in the studio a very special guest um, from Richardson, Texas. He is the mayor of Richardson, Mayor um, Paul Velker. That's right. Did I say that right? Say okay. Right. Um, so thank you for joining us today. A little bit about um, Paul is that he has his uh, bachelor of, uh, Bachelor's of Art degree in Business Administration from William Penn University in Oskaloosa. Oskaloosa, Iowa. I said it right this time. Good. Iowa. Um, he sells. He does sales and marketing professional in the information technology and communications industry. He has over 30 years of experience working in Richardson's telecom corridor. He's a past chairman of the board of the Richardson Chamber of Commerce, past um, homeowners association president. He is the mayor and has served on the Richardson City Council in 2013. And then he was appointed mayor pro tem in 2015 and assumed mayor um, later that year. Later that year. Um, you went the oh, wrong sorry. way. <laughs> Give me that clicker back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding, y'all. Okay, but he was elected mayor in 2017 and in 2019. Other duties include um, past board of Richardson ISD Tomorrow Foundation. He's a past board member of the UT Dallas Business School of Industry um, Advisory Board. He was appointed, also appointed by Governor Rick Perry to the Texas Workforce Commission in the ID, IT Cluster Committee. He is also married to his lovely wife, Chris, and has one son. So welcome well, to the show this well, thank morning. Thank you for having me. Mayor. I, I uh, always look forward to, to talking about dyslexia um, to anyone that will listen, honestly. But my favorite is talking to, to students. So I appreciate you giving me this platform to discuss 
the topics. And, we and, have that in common, I believe. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we absolutely. like to talk to everybody about dyslexia, right. too. You know, um, I'm, I'm honored to issue a proclamation uh, for this month being Dyslexia Awareness Month. And uh, before we get started, um, because this is live, I want to let everybody know that uh, the city of Richardson, along with um, Dallas, North Dallas area, and Garland, and uh, a couple of other cities, actually, you know, we're, we're still recovering from the tornado that we had uh, uh, this past Sunday. And so um, I, I, if, uh, I'll make a plug if you'll allow me to. So we just opened today our volunteer coordination center. And uh, for people that want to actually give time or uh, any efforts, materials they might have, if they could call 972-744-0900. We're also using our network of community ministries in Richardson to be the the place where funds, anyone that wants to donate money, can go to. We had hundreds of people that were displaced uh, during this event, uh, many that were in apartments that were either uninsured or underinsured, and they're looking for a new place. And so financial help is really what they need right now. So you can go to uh, www.thenetwork.org and uh, donate money uh, to help people in need right now. So I, so I appreciate you So thenetwork.org. Yes. And for those of you who don't know, we had um, nine tornadoes that came through Dallas and Richardson and Garland um, and, and just... Well, it went by really close by all of our our homes. Yeah, I mean, it, was, it was about it was a, a half few, mile from my right. house. It's just unbelievable. If you've, unless you've ever walked through a tornado... <laughs> Uh, situation. It's amazing how in a couple blocks it can be devastation and then just nothing next door. It looks it's normal. Just nothing. I know. And it's and, just uh, like, so it's, it's always tough because it's easy after the, after the news cycles mm -hmm. for people to kind of forget that happened. But these families will be dealing with this for quite a yeah. while. Um, I went and, and I mean the, where the tornado hit was literally one uh, major street away from my house. And I went right. and I have friends over there, so I went to see if they needed any help and uh, just walked around there, and the devastation is right. just unbelievable. People yeah, lost yeah, yeah. everything. You know, our, our ISD um, had to, um, because of power loss, had to move students all over the place. Mm -hmm. uh, fortunately, our ISD is in pretty good shape. DISD also moving students all oh, over. Yeah. But unfortunately, some of the Dallas schools were literally totaled. Yeah. Just, so it'll be a year or yeah. more before some of those schools those even get schools rebuilt. Those schools, you can't even, they're not even there anymore. So, uh, Mr. Mayor, can you repeat that phone number again? Yeah, so 972-744-0900. And that's, if you've got skills especially and you, you know like, how to work I mean, a chainsaw roofing, <laughs> yeah. roofing you've blue tarps Maybe. need to be put out uh moving out debris yeah picking uh, picking debris up moving just, it to the street whatever right mm -hmm. the only thing i tell you and anyone that might be volunteering make sure you have a tetanus shot right yeah that's for you sure because sure. there's lots of nails and boards and stuff but mm -hmm. uh, but anything you can do to help the neighbors i think is is really important yeah. and there's there's the website Absolutely. that you can go to to help also excellent thank you for pulling that out. of course thank you ziggy of course um okay so um well, let's let's, let's talk. Yeah, what, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Other than that, why were we Other here today? That, yeah. So yeah. let's let's life. start oh and, and I mean I know we read your bio, but it's always, you know, bios are bios. But I like to hear from the person right. themselves. Tell us a little bit about yourself and and you know, you know I, what, why you say dyslexia. Yeah, I I grew up uh, in some small cities in in Iowa. I, um, you know, when when you have something like especially when it's undiagnosed, uh, something like dyslexia, it, an added factor that does not help is when you go to multiple schools year after year, or even like in second grade, I think I was in three schools. Oh, wow. You know, so I did a lot of changing of schools when I was in, the, uh, in elementary especially. Um, and, and I think that caused some challenges for me catching up. Plus, what was interesting is that was back when there was new math and old math and different approaches to, you know, to teaching how to read. Right. Mm -hmm. So I would literally go from a public school to a, a parochial school and back to a public school and di in different states. Mm -hmm. And 
you know, it was a little confusing, let's just say I'm that. Sure. Right. And I think there's a lot of students that go through that, especially military families and things that have to change schools a lot. So that was kind of my early years. Um, I, you know, in middle school, I, I was kind of viewed by counselors as um, maybe lazy. Um, they knew I was probably intelligent, but mm -hmm. they, they started thinking about maybe tracking me a different direction than to college. Um, my mom and dad, uh, my dad's a uh, biochemist, my mom studied engineering, um, they weren't going to have any of that. Um, so, you know, thankfully I, I come from a big loving family and, uh, you know, got pushed and helped. Um, but uh, didn't understand some of the challenges though that I had and quite honestly, several people in my family have had, right? Yeah. So, um, by the grace of God and the push of a couple of good parents, I ended up in college. Um, thought I'd be a, an engineer, or maybe I even leaned towards maybe history as a major. And um, my freshman year, my English teacher at Iowa State um, pulled me aside and said, we have a group that does some testing and would like to maybe have you go over there. And if it wasn't for that teacher, wow. I would have never been diagnosed. Wow. But I was a freshman in college before I was diagnosed with dyslexia. That was so nice of you. It was. Um, but he saw I was struggling in my reading assignments. Mm -hmm. you know? so, so let me ask you this question. I know this kind of goes off our, our, our uh, questions here. But this happens a lot, right? So you, <clears throat> people being diagnosed much later in life, right. college, as an adult, <clears throat> Can you think back when you f when you got that diagnosis of being dyslexic, being in college? Right. How did that make you feel about your? Yeah. There's mixed emotions. At K uh, through 12. Well, yeah, I probably didn't do that level of analysis. I, maybe it was as simple as, on one hand, it was a little bit of relief. Mm -hmm. Okay, I now know there was a processing problem or something that made reading difficult for me, mm -hmm. and that explains maybe why I'm not the best speller in the world, right? Mm -hmm. And so, remember, that was 35 years ago. Um, so um, the, the, the tools that we have today and the, uh, the resources we have today were, you know, so much better than, than at that time even. But at least at that time, I then could say, okay, I understand what this is. I understand maybe to some degree how that's affected me up to this point. And then what am I going to do about it, right? So knowledge is power. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, uh, you know, I really do thank that English professor at Iowa State for asking me to go over and get tested. That's right. great. Well, we, hear you... that, we hear that a lot. Sorry. We hear that a lot is, especially as an adult, you right. have relief. Right. Relief and validation. Yeah. It's right. It's like, oh. There was, there was something. Yeah. Not quite right. That I needed help with. Right. So. Or now I better understand that the compensation <laughs> skills that I did naturally, right. mm -hmm. and I can put in the context right. of being dyslexic. Yep. Mm -hmm. so. Did you ever, after that, after your diagnosis, did you ever receive any intervention or anything like that? No. Because I don't uh, remember them some offering no, that kind no, of stuff No, there were no, there were no tool books or anything like that. Um, the professor and others just told me what it was, and they talked about compensation skills. Mm -hmm. So know. they tried to give you some strategies. Some, some but very rudimentary um, at that time yeah no but, did you get accommodations like extra time or no uh, they didn't offer those I, mean, I, I don't remember <laughs> no those are things either. that only have come around recently is yeah. at, at like university college level yeah. um, and uh, I was talking to some friends last night about doing this show and and uh, it's amazing when you open up a little bit how many people go oh yeah I am too mm -hmm. you know or my, or my kids are mm -hmm. and uh, you know we I was talking to a gentleman last night at a, at a chamber function and uh, he was talking about how he's a big advocate fighting for his daughter getting into university mm -hmm. to make sure that you know the diagnosis is aware and she will have then compensation capabilities yeah. for classes and things like yeah, that the accommodations yeah. and, and that's it's, right now that's legislation that's it's up on the are uh, being uh, federally federal right. it's the, called it's rise act the rise right. act it's it's These failed are important things three that, times yeah. but it's back up yeah it's I don't know it's a, if it's going to pass this know, year or not though Everybody struggles with the definition of a, of a, a disease or a, uh, an affliction or a challenge. And you, you try to, you know, politicians being one, we all try to compartmentalize. And, uh, and in that process, sometimes 
things can can be um, difficult to get the actual right thing done right. because things get battered about. But right. we're, I'm, I'm very hopeful that, that we can get that so that accommodations can be made right. for students. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm, I'm proud of where I am. I'm proud of how I got here. Um, but you never know with a little more help here or there what right. might have happened. Right, yeah. right. I have no regrets, well, well, by the way. I mean, <laughs> yeah, we, good. That's good. The, the, the message really is you can make it. You will make it. Right. If, and you, you obviously, a lot of times you come away with grit. Right. I mean, is the main. Is no, there's the a lot of people that have amazing gifts, right? Yep. But what I find oftentimes is the people that have been the most gifted oftentimes take that for granted. If you actually have to overcome some challenges mm -hmm. and and earn things and really work hard, mm -hmm. um, you don't take those for granted. No. Right. right. You're right. You're absolutely right. Yep. Yep. So you. You and I share this uh, this piece, but uh, how did you get into the IT field? Well, I um, I had a business degree, but I also had uh, computer science too, and uh, uh, I was fortunate enough to be a teaching assistant in my university for the computer science department, and uh, we we needed to buy a new computer system for the administration of the of the of the school, and uh, since I was a teaching assistant, the head of the computer science department allowed me to be on the committee that helped pick who, who we were going to buy from. So it was a great learning experience for me. I got to go l listen to IBM and Digital and Philip Packard and lots and lots and lots of companies sell us a computer system. And, and we did buy a system. And so um, between the work and then that experience is kind of how I said, hey, that's, that's kind of a cool job. I think I'll go do that. And so when I graduated in 82, 83, there was a recession. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had called the uh, Hewlett Packard sales organization, which we, was the company we bought from. Mm -hmm. and I said, hey, I'd love to have a job at HP, you know? And they're like, do you not know there's a recession on? We, <laughs> we have no jobs. And I said, well, I'll go anywhere. I'm a, I'm a college grad. And so they looked and they said, well, Dallas, Texas, for some reason, doesn't think that there's a recession on. And they still have open recs. So I said, great packed up my car and I drove down to Dallas and interviewed for the job and got it. And so, uh, you know, I was willing to do what I needed to do to get a job out of college. And I ended up working for Hewlett Packard for 29 years in various jobs there uh, from, from sales, marketing, corporate development, portfolio management, product management, all sorts of things that I got the opportunity to do. Went to work for uh, a Swedish company called Ericsson uh, in mm -hmm. the communications industry and also uh, come a British company called Capita, and I do independent consulting and, and go-to-market strategies and, uh, and and that type of thing now, uh, along with being mayor. So. Wow, you're a pretty busy guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so what? So let me, this is I don't know if we we talked about this or not, but um, I don't or y'all talked about this or not. Um, but so, so what? Like I always find this really interesting. Like what? What? what spark did you have to want to become mayor uh, I mean, well it, it some of it goes back you know i, I because get, i think there should be more dyslexic people out in the forefront um um you know paving the way and saying right. okay well yes i have dyslexia but i can too do all this stuff right and i will you know because so i was blessed to find william penn uh, college university uh, after leaving iowa state i i took uh, a year off to kind of gather my thoughts, literally, and decided to get the business degree from, from William Penn uh, and a liberal arts degree instead of a, a BS. And um, I worked at a steel mill uh, that year and every summer to pay for my private college education. And uh, we can talk about this in a little bit, but um, I worked in the maintenance department with plumbers, electricians, pipe fitters, iron workers, you know, chemists. Um, you know, in that heavy industry, and it was a that in and of itself was an education for me, also. Oh, sure. But at William Penn, they had a policy that in every course you take, you had to debate. And for some reason, debate and dyslexia and I got along because I didn't have to write huge papers and I didn't have to read huge things, I, I could use my voice, and I only needed three by five card. Mm -hmm. I can get 
stuff on a three by five card that you wouldn't believe, <laughs> right? But you, it, you've mastered the bullet point. I mastered the bullet point, and what I found out I loved was argument, creating both sides, not knowing which one I was going to have to defend or argue for, and it really prepared me for politics because it forces you to get your message in a concise form, understand both sides, and be able to argue either way. And so what I did at, at, at university prepared me for all sorts of activities that I've done on boards and commissions and things like that. that and and I'll, I'll be honest, one of the things that I was so proud of Hewlett Packard for was they were very famous for being a collaborative type of management style and consensus driven. And that also was a good preparation for public life as, a, as an elected official, is understanding how to collaborate and how to drive to a consensus to make decisions. And so, you know, some of the things, the tools, the, 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 the things I did to overcome, being able to speak, being more concise, um, getting just to the point, all those things helped me prepare myself for, for being mayor. Yeah, I mean, dy dyslexics are known for um, getting to the point, not using as many words, right? Uh, being very direct. Um, one of when we were talking on the phone uh, for our, our prep for this the show, you had talked about um, a mantra that you use: uh, "Fail fast." Right. And I, I really liked that mantra. Yeah. Um, it, it comes from the computer science. Um, development world today. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, um, it's kind of a concept that you do in agile development. Um, and what, what you want to be able to do is create things in a smaller container and, and then if you, you can try it without having to do two years worth of development, you can do it daily, weekly, whatever, implement it. If it works, great. If it doesn't, it failed, and you learn something, and you move on, and you do it again. So that that information technology approach of failing fast, right? But learning something from those failures right. is is a life lesson in in so many ways. But it does really suit, and that's why programming was kind of a one of those things I just happened on, and I'm like, wow, I really like this. <laughs> uh, computer programming was something that I really enjoyed doing, and 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 continue to. I don't program anymore but continue to watch and how it can have lessons for all of us in life. And, and so, yeah, fail fast is a, is a concept within agile computing and, and, I, and, and that whole world of development that I think is a lesson for so many people in so many ways. Yeah, I mean, we, as dyslexics, fail a lot of times. You got, and you get used to it. We, I mean, not in the sense that I'm glad I failed, no. but, but in, if you put it in the context of some career thing like that, we come into it saying, hey, well, we fail We've a been lot. Here before. Yeah. <laughs> I get back up and I do it again. Yeah. Try something else. Yeah. Can, can you, you know, do so, this? I don't know, but I'm going to try. Let's yeah. see it. And so we're not afraid to fail. And that, right. there's right. nothing wrong with failing. That's, I've learned a lot more from my failures in life than I have from any wild success I've had. Oftentimes, I, those the wild successes are what actually I fear. Right. Because I, you know, ego and all sorts of other things can get in your way when Absolutely. that happens. Absolutely. Um, like I was telling you on the phone, you know, in martial arts, we have, our mantra is you either win or you learn. Yeah. That's it. You, you either win in jujitsu or you learn right. why you got caught. Yeah. So same thing. Right. I, I love it. I love it. Um, as you know, we're, we're going to fast forward, right. um, as mayor, um, or in your professional life, uh, do you still struggle with dyslexia and, sure. and you know, now that communications you're... is so key uh, when you're in sales or marketing, especially right. right? Um, and, and communications takes all aspects of that. So, uh, oral written, uh, other types of body language, right. everything that, that, that comes into it, confidence. Um, so in the, in my professional career, um, I always, relied heavily on oral mm -hmm. discussions. Um, you know, I, I love being in front of customers and talking, right. you know, you know, even on a phone if that's necessary. Um, but 
put me down at Sunday night at eight o'clock at night when Monday morning there's a request for proposal due and have me write, you know, 30 pages of stuff. Mm -hmm. I struggle, like a lot of people will, just with spelling and some aspects of grammar and things. Right. Um, so from a career standpoint, um, yeah, I'm always aware. Um, uh, we talked on the phone about becoming mayor, and, and uh, the mayor's role was kind of thrown on me, right? And I knew, uh, I remember talking to my wife, Chris, about this. Uh, I knew one thing that I would have to do when I became mayor, and that's the state of the city address. Mm -hmm. This is basically an hour's worth of a presentation that you give as the mayor. And, uh, and traditionally, it's done you know, through a, uh, an environment like this with a teleprompter and you talk and talk and talk and stuff, you know, but you, you have that in the back of your mind, but you move, you push forward. Right. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and because I'm so open, you know, I, I told my communications team at the city, you know, that I'm dyslexic. And I said, it's one thing to read something. It's another thing to read and out loud. And then it's another thing to stand in front of teleprompters and do it it's, it's the, the, a, there's it's several different mediums yeah. that you're using right? right and so we'll we're literally working on next year's um in january end of january time frame state of the city right now it's being drafted and i'll read it you know half a dozen times and we'll make changes you know circumstantial or other aspects of it and it can look perfect on paper. I'm like, oh yeah, this really sounds good. In my head, it sounds good. Then I, then I go through, okay, now I need to read this out loud. And I'll start making changes there. Then it hits the teleprompter. And the sentence structure and all the things that happen in that world changes the speech one more time. Wow. Mm -hmm. And, and I'm, I'm blessed with a, a really good staff that, that uh, is understanding of that. They, uh, they've gotten to know me now over the years, so th th there's less editing now than there was at the, the, the first couple of State of the Cities because they've got me figured out. So that's kind of cool. Well, that helps. I, I love the fact that you said you're very open about yeah. your dyslexia. Yeah. Um, I, I've always been open about it also right. uh, to a degree, right? right? When you're a public um, figure, though, it, uh, yeah, you, it, it's you, amazing you, when you when you say something and then all of a sudden the phone calls start coming right. in. But, but some of the things I love doing, though, like at RISD for the graduation of their dyslexia program, you know, being able to stand in front of not just the students, but the parents, because this is a family, you know, challenge oftentimes and, and an, of a level of understanding that everyone has to take in. So so I love standing in front of people saying, yes, I'm the mayor. and Yes, I have these challenges. And, uh, but you know, there's so many examples of successful people, right? Um, uh, you know, whether they be industry leaders or some of the, the especially entrepreneurs, oftentimes you'll find are dyslexic. Uh, one of the reasons is because of that fail aspect, right? They're, I'm, I'm an on. entrepreneur, <laughs> yeah. I failed, I, I, I fail all the time. I have six companies that I failed at, but I'm gonna get one, right? You know, they're not that that, that doesn't bother them at all, right? And so, you'll oftentimes find some of the uh, entrepreneurs, the business leaders that maybe didn't even get through college, right? Know? But they went off and started a business. They took risks, My uncle. and they were unafraid to fail. Yeah, That's I was just going to say that it's very freeing, yeah, to be able to stand up there and go, "Hey, you know, I'm dyslexic, and yes, I'm I'm probably going to mess a whole lot right. of stuff up, but hey, understand that um, I will make it through it, right. and and I, you know, I'm here for you too." And, and as I said, you know, debate really helped me. Yes, uh, from a communication standpoint, I. Oftentimes, I, I beg people to run for office, get involved, get on a board and commission, do volunteer work, you know, help a nonprofit, run for city council. I say run for mayor. I, I, I love having ideas, and, and it's only during the time, election time, really, when ideas come out. Right. You know, not all of them are great to the point of failing fast, but, right. but at least that's when you can have a conversation. And I also tell people I look forward to putting four years of college debate in full use, right. <laughs> but but uh, I'm not not from an intimidation standpoint because I just love doing that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's fun. So what? Um, so being mayor, what are some of your largest concerns, the mayor of Richardson? Well, you know, well, how, how how big is Richardson for our? So we're we're a city of about uh, 120 thousand now. Uh, but then your school district. Well, we have two school districts. The, Te for those that are not in Texas, uh, I'll have to do a quick explanation, right? Yeah. So we're the first city north of Dallas. 
uh, in a in a metroplex uh, i was just past president of the metroplex mayors association so we have like 13 cities that are over a hundred thousand um, 7.5 million people live in the dallas fort worth area uh, so relatively speaking we're a small city uh, 120,000 people we're a pretty big employment center though we have about 135,000 people that work in richardson during the daytime and then we also host um, UT Dallas, which is in Richardson, Texas. Mm -hmm. And they have uh, nearly 30,000 students there and then wow. faculty and staff. So there's a quarter of a million people in Richardson during the daytime. And, uh, and so we, we are blessed with having wonderful access, both roads and communication networks, because we are the home of Telecom Corridor. So yeah, I, right. we have more fiber optics and wireless networking than probably any city in the world. Um, and we are also blessed with the types of employment we have. They're high tech, high paying, highly educated people that, that work in our city. But, you know, when you put it in the context of this conversation, it is about those schools. And we have the Richardson Independent School District, which also serves some of Dallas and Garland. And then we have the Plano Independent School District, which um, serves also Plano, but also Richardson. Um, and it's divided by county lines. We're in Dallas County and Collin County, um, two thirds, one third. So those independent schools, so from, I tell people from pre-K to a PhD, you don't have to leave our city limits, right? right. We have some wonderful parochial schools, private schools also. Um, so in the context of this conversation, Getting the schools to have the resources necessary, the tools, the understanding, the policy decisions that they can advocate for in Austin and in Washington, D.C. are really, really important to me. And I, I do whatever I can to help in, in that process. Uh, you know, my job as mayor, I, I jokingly tell people that I'm really the, the top sales guy for the city. My job is to go out and get... Sell Richardson. To sell Richardson, <laughs> to get businesses to want to be in Richardson. Right? So. Well, so, and big so, businesses so want good schools, right? They want good schools. They want good workforce. Right. Yep. So really, um, in, in a globally competitive market, which we, we, we are in, um, the state legislature has deemed uh, Richardson the international business capital of North Texas just because of the sheer number of international businesses we have in our city. Um, we compete on a global basis. And so workforce development and, is the differentiator that I believe makes us more competitive, not just as a city or a region or a state, but in the United States. And what really differentiates us, because I spent a lot of time in international business, is our ability as uh, our workforce's ability, our companies, the, the creators of intellectual property, um, that critical thinking capability is something that really differentiates us from other regions in the world. Some of that's driven by our educational systems. I believe some of that's driven by our political systems mm -hmm. that allow for that individual freedom and that capital flow of resources to allow the environment to be successful, to allow creative minds to come up with services and solutions. Um, so I brag about the workforce we have in Richardson. Now, having said that, we need more. We need more talent. We need a really broad base of talent. From uh, this, this is why I love working like with uh, UT Dallas on one side and Richland College on the other. Uh, I need that PhD student that's got that bright idea, but I also need people who can implement that mm -hmm. and and be the operational aspect of of a technology or a product or service. And, and we're blessed to have both. I just need more. Right. Mm -hmm. You know. And and. Tapping into a whole community that might be dyslexic is a way I can increase my workforce. So that's another reason why I'm so open about this is I want people to be successful in their careers, whatever career that might be that they choose or whichever path they may choose to go. And as I said earlier, I, I worked at a steel mill with alongside, you know, electricians and plumbers and pipe fitters and the whole, the whole spectrum. And some of the smartest people I know mm -hmm. worked at that steel mill. Absolutely. Um, they may not have been a double E, but they passed the electrical and, you know, tests. And they are 
pragmatic, practical people that knew how to solve problems. Right. And and we need more of them, along with those PhD students that created some amazing technology that hopefully can be commercialized and that will create jobs for the future. Well, and like you and I, I talked about on the phone, um, from my perspective, one of the main things that draws families to cities is a good education system. Yes. And um, we were talking about the pendulum swing between uh, trade school and going to college. Right. Uh, and, and my point of view on that is, um, let's make sure that we educate these kids first and allow them to make a choice yeah. in either going down the path of uh, college or going to a trade school, because both are uh, very admirable. But I don't know uh, a tradesman today that it doesn't have to know math, right. doesn't know have to read and write. Have computer skills. I mean, just an auto mechanic as an example. I mean, you, you right. have, yeah. it's you know, all the, on the computer. you're working on a computer yeah. nowadays. Mm -hmm. and, and to some degree, automation, people worry about automation taking people's jobs as an example, right? But what it does is elevate that job so that you do more critical thinking. To be able to do that, basic skills of reading and writing arithmetic right, right are needed now more than ever for all of those jobs that exactly. you just mentioned and so it's not a simple thing of just saying well you're not going to go to college so go be a carpenter right some of the hardest math i've ever done is trying to figure out how to do carpentry work right. mm -hmm. um you know i an electrician uh someone working on your air conditioning systems all of those jobs they take technical yep. skills that Absolutely. basically means you've got to be able to read a manual mm -hmm. and understand what that means and then apply it Absolutely. and so you know i i look at this workforce that's necessary and the breadth of it fundamental education is so critical no matter what path you may choose to to go to and and, and really that's the reason why rachel and i fight uh, I say fight, advocate so so hard and so much for our children, that 20% of our population that is dyslexic, right. and making sure that they get the appropriate um, intervention, and they also are, we're identifying these kids so we can right. get the appropriate uh, intervention. Well, and you can also make career and educational decisions openly and honestly. Right. Yeah. I made the decision not to go to law school because I couldn't keep up with the reading. Yeah, they read a you know, ton. They read a ton. And, and then I, they continue to read a ton as right. after they're done. And so. Quite honestly, I'm and glad. it's boring I'm, for me. No, I love lawyers, don't get me wrong, but you know, I'm kind of glad I didn't do I, that. I'm right. glad they're you out know. there. I'll just say that. I'm glad <laughs> I use the, loves I use to many of them. I tell people to get a lawyer involved early and often. Yeah. I'm just glad it's not me. Exactly. Right. <laughs> I'm glad it's not me. But um, yeah, um, so, I, I mean, I've had some friends. I have quite a few friends that have children at Richardson ISD. I used to live in Richardson ISD catchment right. um, before uh, I had kids. Right. Um, and a lot of my friends, you know, because we are dyslexic, and so us dyslexics kind of tend to find each other and right. um, band together or just tell what works for you, what works what, for me. How, how how's this teacher with handling your child and you know blah, blah you know anything really um so i think richardson is starting i mean i've seen the good and um i also saw the bad um a few years ago but that was statewide right and it's it's taking a well, while and, and i'm not gonna you know i'm a big advocate of public schools do not get me wrong mm -hmm. i'm also a product of public private and we made the decision um my son has some learning differences. My wife taught at Fairhill for kids with yeah. learning differences, so Fairhill's she was a great she school. was she was uh, keenly aware of a variety on? of different challenges, including dyslexia and others uh, that my son has. And so we actually chose to homeschool. Mm -hmm. So, as a public official, I believe in choice and freedom, right? So whether it's public, private, or homeschooling, here in the state of Texas, we have some of the most flexible. Um, types of decisions you can make with respect to educating your children. Um, but having said that, especially as a public official, I'm a big proponent of public schools. They are the, the backstop for every aspect of our lives. Mm -hmm. And we need a, a well-educated citizen who will be that workforce, who will be the 
people that get elected who will be the people to vote right. mm -hmm. um, uh, for elections. They need to have basic knowledge of all those things we talked about earlier, but also civics, right. understanding how their voice can be heard and understood. Um, because th that group of 20% has to be at the forefront of advocacy. Right. Right. And so hopefully through an educational process, you learn about how to do that. Right? It's important. And a lot of times, you know, I would say a great majority of that 20% tend to not want to voice because they don't yeah. want to seem uh, different. They don't want to be different. It, yeah. And that's, Stupid. that's where we're right. here to uh, empower them and show right. and tell them, Hey, look, this is what you need to do. This is how you need to do it. And, and, and I'm not going to sit here and say every dyslexic person is smarter than others. You know, it's right. just, no, no, no. we're yeah. all, we're all on the same spectrums of, yeah. of things. Yeah. But I will say that people with dyslexia who have overcome or adapted or compensated can be amazing in oh, what yeah. they do based on the focus that they did on those skills. And so uh, it's back to the point of not taking anything for granted. Right. right? And, and as long as schools help promote that, I think that's exciting too. Right. Um, you want to? Oh, sorry. I took it away. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh. Um, is there anything else? So is there, um, is there any other aspect in, in your, your uh, job as mayor that you see um, where we can utilize um, you know, our population of right. dyslexia more? Well, I think in general, if you look at a city, school districts, um, one of the things that I, I'm a big advocate for is just inclusiveness, right? And whether that be ethnic or skin color or health, whatever it might be, you know, what I love about Richardson especially is how diverse we are. It is very diverse. It mm -hmm. is extremely diverse. And I, I come from an industry, the tech industry, that is extremely diverse. I'm a minority in almost any meeting I go to. Right. And have been for 30 years. Uh, that's just the reality of my industry. Right. Um, and I tell people there's really good reasons why our industry is so diverse. I like people being in a room when decisions are being made that come at those decisions from different perspectives. You get better results when you have different types of backgrounds. I also like having a business in my community that's so diverse and a community that's so diverse for that business so they can almost have a microcosm of the world. Right. How will a product or service work in this ethnic environment or this country environment? You can find all that out in our city. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Right? But it also, from an inclusive standpoint, I find it's amazing when you look at, uh, I'll give you two, an example, real simple. And I t it's not only Richardson. There's wonderful cities all over the United States. But in Richardson, you can have someone from the Jewish faith, a Muslim and a Sikh literally sat down and have lunch together and be friends, share ideas. I say, only here can that happen. So when you uh, have that level of inclusiveness for all sorts of things, it's amazing what kind of ideas, products, services, right. what your neighborhood can be like. Uh, my neighborhood is so diverse. It's, uh, I, I, tell, I joke with people, it's the United Nations, right? Oh, yeah, it is. <laughs> My son growing up there doesn't see color, doesn't see religion, you know. So I want that same level of inclusiveness to occur great. for something like dyslexia. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's okay to tell somebody I'm Jewish. It's okay to tell somebody I'm dyslexic. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. right? And we have to uh, come at it that, uh, that way right. because you telling your story, me telling my story, Rachel telling her story, that empowers somebody that behind us to be able to come out and go, right. oh, well, they are? Well, okay, well, then I'll yeah. say I am too. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I was talking to a group of parents, and I, I said, um, I asked the question about who in here is dyslexic. Right. And, you know, they, they, they were doing this number when they raised their hand. I yeah. go, no, 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 we're I, all here. I have we're a, all safe. And, you know, you know. I have a unique perspective on that in that uh, my son's adopted. And so maybe an adopted parent has a freer hand on it, on exploring every, every option. Mm -hmm. Because oftentimes um, when I meet parents, either through guilt or 
maybe they never were diagnosed, but in the back of their mind, they think maybe they were. And there's this level of, did that gene pool right. cause mm -hmm, this? Mm -hmm. You know, don't worry. Well, so I, I know it kind of is what it is, and you just yeah. figure it out and do the best you can and right. get the best resources available right. to help. I, I told those parents, I said, um, the, the question was, do you feel guilty that, um, mm -hmm. that your child has dyslexia? Like, yeah. it's your fault. And they were like, well, yeah. And yeah. I go, well, it is genetic, right? but that's as far as it goes. Now, it can be your fault from here on out. Right. What you do. What Absolutely. you do with the knowledge that you've gained. Now that you know, what do you do with it? Right. That can be your fault. Yeah. But let's don't own this piece of it. Mm -hmm. Don't don't hide. Don't yeah. um, ignore. Don't put it in the back of your mind somewhere and mm -hmm. act like it's not there. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's just going to get with bigger. It. It's just right. going to get bigger if you don't deal with it. Good. Right? Yep. Well, um, Mr. Mayor, I... So appreciate you coming oh, yeah. on the show. I appreciate you being uh, a, a strong advocate for the dyslexic uh, population. Mm -hmm. um, I appreciate being here, and thank you for what you guys do. Um, you know, you guys change lives. Well, well, and, we're we're talking, so I think that's something. You know, at least talking about it and. Um, and bringing people like you on the show to have more people talking about right. it. It's going to, the more you talk about it, the more change happens, Right. you know? So that's what we're hoping for. More change in a positive direction. And, uh, so. you know, vote for things that yes. help students. Vote for things that help universities do research. Yes. You know, yes. those, are, those research. are, those are things that are really important too. So just thanks. Well, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll ask this one last question. What do um, what do people in your position, mayors, what do you need from us, the general public, right. to help you uh, advocate better for uh, students with dyslexia? I think acknowledging the programs, especially at you know the elementary level, the earlier you can get engaged. The, I mean, please don't wait till you're right. A, freshman in college, right. you know, before right. you get diagnosed. Uh, so uh, early access to the tools and the, the, te the techniques that, that can be done, and that can only be done once, you know, a diagnosis has been made. So um, promoting any school system, public or private, to, you know, have people trained to understand who needs to be tested and why, and then what to do with that afterwards. Mm -hmm. But also, seriously, I, I, I'm amazed at some of the work that's going on at like UT Dallas uh, around brain science, mm -hmm. um, you know. They are doing a lot. They are. Their neuroscience, and, uh, it's fascinating. You know, so there's all sorts of hopes um, that could be helping from a genetic standpoint mm -hmm. to diagnostic and or treatment that might be done because of some of this research. So um, keep pushing people, you know, right. your school districts, your universities, Right. Your politicians, whoever. Mm -hmm. Rachel, you know, I need to see if we can get a hold of somebody over at UT Dallas. Yeah, and see I might know a okay. person or two. Oh, good. Yeah, well, we'll go over there and take a tour and, and uh, we can talk about it on our That'd show. That'd be fun. Yeah. 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 It's a great place. Yeah. Good. No. So um, thank you so much for, for doing the proclamation uh, for Dyslexia Awareness Month uh, in October. Yes. And, uh, you know, please come back uh, no. on our show and keep doing Do you all want the to great tell the, have we already told the audience what the proclamation said uh, I can't remember did yeah we? no we did we it, it's did? it's just a, it's the city of, of of Richardson has a proclamation for dyslexia awareness month and it really is about awareness right yes. you know um, it's it's about the things we just discussed mm -hmm. promoting it at the school levels uh, whatever that be pre-k a PhD. That's right. You know, we, we need awareness of this. And, uh, but also just, you know, a proclamation can have a way of normalizing things in the sense that there's no Absolutely. shame, there's no issues, right? Well, we appreciate it. Um, you know, um, I think just being aware and saying, yes, we are aware, we, we hear you. Good. It's just nice to be heard. Right. You know, invalidated. Um, invalidated. Right. And so I think that it means a lot. Excellent. Well, thanks again for what you guys do. I appreciate you offering to have me come speak. Yeah. Thanks for yeah. taking time. Well, so um, I don't know if 
I don't think we ever said, but this is the last show of season one. So this yeah. is a wrap up. <laughs> Uh, and it's just been a whirlwind, whirlwind yeah. of, um, you know, emotion and gain of knowledge, knowledge and, and learning. meeting new people. And you want to talk about drinking from the fire hose. Wow. Yeah, yeah we've been doing that. That's you this know, year. Um, I want to thank our producer, Ziggy. Yeah. He's I... always done just a fabulous Ziggy, job. Ziggy, what <laughs> up, man? You know, I, I always use, I always use uh, Ziggy as a litmus test of, uh, hey, Ziggy, did you learn something today about dyslexia? Because he, he doesn't yeah. uh, have dyslexia or know anybody that has it until we came in. And now he's uh, becoming an expert yeah. at it. Mm -hmm. So, Ziggy, thank you so much for all that you do. It's been my pleasure to work on this show and Aww. spread dyslexia awareness. Aww, nice thank you. So, um, we will um, start Empower Dyslexia Season 2 in January. Yeah, in January. And we've got some huge, huge plans yeah. uh, for the next for the upcoming show. So, uh, make sure that you stick around uh, and look out for us yeah and until then you guys have a wonderful holiday season right. and um if you know somebody that if your child is struggling and um oh wait wait wait, wait. before we do that i uh -oh. did want to get a plug out to the dyslexia road show steve and i are um involved with putting that on um, we're coming to a city near you, which is Dallas, Austin, or Houston in April. So please mark that on your dates. There's April 4th in Dallas, April 18th in Austin, and April 25th in Houston. And we're going to talk about all things dyslexia along with um, decoding dyslexia. And we, ha we also have uh, sponsorship opportunities. And if you would like yes. to uh, volunteer to help put this on, yes. you know, please contact so us or... Um, Decoding Dyslexia Texas. Yeah, and um, we went to uh, the Dyslexia show or last Dyslexia. Year. It was last year. I can't remember what they called it last year, but it was fantastic. We learned so much and met so many people. Um, uh, we just learned a ton. Lots of parents, lots of teachers. Um, you know, so it was good. So I recommend going, guys. You'll you won't be sorry. Um, and so, as we always like to re recommend at the end of our show, if you feel like your child or student is struggling and you're not sure why, go request that they have have them tested. That your school have them tested. Um, there are templates on our website. You can go to www. Dyslexia. Uh, I'm sorry, empowerdyslexia.info um, and grab a template from our website and you just fill it in and hand it to your school counselor um, and they that will start the process going and uh, you'll be happy that you did. Your child will also, or student, because they'll have a little bit of idea of why they're a little different than some of the other kids and, um, and that's empowering. So we want to empower everybody well, as much as we can the last thing we want to say real quick is remember if you want um to use the uh learning ally mm. uh discount code it is uh ed20 to get 20 percent off of uh, the family membership for mm. learning ally a lot of school districts have that already so if you didn't know about it go ask your school librarian yep um and they can hook you up if you're homeschooled or in a private school that doesn't have that, then this is where this would probably work best for you. But I think most public schools use Learning Ally. Yep. I think. It, it's, so, it's publicly funded, publicly and privately funded. So. Yeah. So anyways, okay. Thank you so much, guys, for tuning in this year to see us um, It was talk. an honor. Thank you very much. <laughs> it was an honor. Your, we appreciate your, your support. support. We'll see you next season. We'll see you next season.